genome editing uh, is writing uh, usually small changes into the genome. So out of six billion base pairs, you might change one gene. Um, it needs reading in order to know what you're doing, know what you want to do, and also checking once you've done it that you did the right thing. So many of the things that, that I've worked on sounds like science fiction one year and then just a very small number of years later, partly because it's an exponential uh, cost curve, um, many things are possible. So the, um, being able to read your genome um, so quickly and easily and cheaply, almost zero dollars, uh, unbelievable, um, being able to fight cancer cells with engineered T cells is certainly uh, Remarkable. Uh, we have not yet brought. Uh, we have brought back two extinct species, but they are they are viruses, and they're not particularly useful uh, uh, in a, in a uh, clinical or industrial setting. Uh, but they. But we are picking up speed on. It's not so much about extinct species. It's about helping living species adapt to new environments. I, I myself am usually the first one to, to point out the, the um, challenges and the hazards of, of new technologies and I think it's very important to have that discussion as far in advance as, as possible. So sometimes people say I'm talking about things that are not yet a problem, but I think if we wait until they are a problem then we'll be very reactive and we'll be acting too rashly.